Peter, all my friends know I've been obsessed my whole life with the nature of consciousness, probably not unlike you. And free will, which is a philosophical concept now being studied by neuroscience, I have found to be a probe, a test of what consciousness is about. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes. Uh, I think that um, the first question is to ask, you know, what consciousness evolved for. And uh, my own view is that consciousness evolved for high-level planning and selection from among possible scenarios. And um, it's very closely tied to attention, especially endogenous attention. Endogenous attention meaning voluntary attention. So anything that you can uh, attend now, you're conscious of, and you have a, an associated feeling or qualia with that. And even things that are, you're not attending now, but you could attend in the next moment, they're sort of the background qualia that you experience, right? I mean, I think that consciousness is synonymous with the word experience. I don't see them as having a, a different meaning. Okay, so if consciousness is the domain of what your voluntary attention is allocated to now and uh, could be attended to or allocated to in the next moment, that is the domain of what consciousness is. And then why does it exist? It exists so that endogenous attention, voluntary attention, can shift to things within that domain. Now, it's voluntary attention, right? So immediately you're talking about volition. And um, so consciousness is very closely tied to volition in the sense that it is the domain of things that you can shift your attention to volitionally. So yes, I think that free will, especially in the context of uh, volition involving attention to you know what's present in the world or what's present internally, or what is uh, being played out internally in sort of internal scenarios, uh, is really uh, about the issue of free will. And so free will offers a kind of indirect so, so I've heard four different uh, terminology. I want to just be sure we know how they line up. We have our, our goal consciousness, and I hear of uh, volition, um, and, and then attention, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then free will. And so we have these four. H how do you arrange these pieces uh, to, to where they, they make sense in, in, a, in a logical flow? Okay, so consciousness or experience, subjective experience, is the domain within which volitional attention can operate. Okay. It's the space within which this operator, attention, endogenous attention, can do its thing. Wait a minute, now I've heard endogenous attention and, and volition. It, it, right, so endogenous attention just means volitional attention. You can shift your attention at will. So, for example, you know, you, you could be looking at me, but shifting your attention over to over there, right? right, right. And so you have some sort of internal control over, over this thing. So, you know, often uh, free will is thought of in terms of action, like moving my hand. But a lot of what we do is um, control our own internal mental function, particularly through volitional attention, where, for example, you pay attention to one thing and not another. So, you know, you're listening to some, say, beautiful piece of music, and you say, okay, now I'm going to pay attention to the oboe. Mm -hmm. And all the other instruments are still there. You're, they're, you're right, experiencing right. them, but they're, they're sort of the background. Then you rewind the, you rewind the piece of music, and now you, you pay attention to the violin. It's the exact same piece of music, but your experience is different, right? Because what you're attending to is a different uh, figure, so to speak, against a different ground. And attention seems, volitional attention seems very much uh, involved with zooming in on, focusing in on some figure and ignoring the rest or sort of downplaying the rest. Okay. And, it's, and we have a mechanism in the brain for attention, reticular right. system in the lower part of the brain. Well, the reticular system is very much associated with sort of just being awake, awake. versus right. not awake. And so that's one meaning of it. Uh, one problem is that the word attention is a single word from English, but in fact there's four, three or four different circuits. You have the reticular activating system in the brainstem that leads to you just kind of waking up. You have what's called exogenous attention, which is the attention that gets dragged over to somebody who's waving their hand. And we, we use this all the time. You know, you go to pick, some, so you pick somebody up at the airport, you don't stand there and do this, right? Yeah. That would be idiotic. Yeah. You do this, yeah. right? And if the, you're, you know, say your mother's coming out and she sees you doing this, she'd say, what's wrong with you? You know, you should have done this. Right. Exogenous attention is what gets, gets dragged to that motion. Exogenous attention is what makes it annoying to have flashing uh, advertisements on the internet. Uh -huh. 
But that's one system. Because you're forced to look at it. That's right, and that's not volitional. You right. can't right. help but shift your attention to right. loud or annoying or flashing right. things. Right. That's just the way the system is set up. Endogenous attention, however, is volitional. It has a different time course. It's, it's involving overlapping, but different circuits, uh, especially in the frontal parietal lobe, um, that allow the brain to specify what inputs will be processed most deeply. So the issue of consciousness, experience, attention, and volition are very closely linked because consciousness or experience is the domain over which volitional attention can operate. Okay. I guess I'm troubled by your identity between consciousness and experience um, because it, it, unless you, you have a, a different definition of experience, what, what, how are you defining experience? I mean, experience is having done something. I mean, I could go through, a, a, a zombie could go through experience. It walks, it talks, it looks like it's doing things, but it has no internal feelings of it, but it's still having experiences that could be encoded in computers or neural things to make it look like it's doing stuff. Right, so I, I think zombies, um, first of all, I don't think zombies can exist uh, in the way that I suppose Chalmers has argued that they could that um, if a being completely lacked experience, and I, I, when I say experience, I don't mean past experiences, I mean subjective experience now, the having of subjective feelings and things like pain, color, and so forth. Uh, if, if a being lacked experience, lacked consciousness, lacked subjective awareness, those are all, I think, synonymous, then it couldn't do certain things. For example, it couldn't do attentional tracking, right? because attentional tracking uh, is, a, is a voluntary operation to say, I'm going to track this, say, moving ball among 20 other moving balls. You can, can, can't you program a computer to do that? Well, I, uh, I, don't, I don't think that uh, a zombie would be able to carry out attentional tracking because uh, it would not be able to specify, based upon criteria in its working memory, the selection of this one versus that one because it wouldn't have access to them, right? Presumably, there's no, if there's no experience, it can't uh, access this particular thing to track versus that. Uh, I suppose you could argue that, well, I can design a system that would, would do that. And um, then, yeah, fair enough. I mean, it becomes quite difficult, right? But um, then you can say, okay, well, if the, if the being can specify the location of the object that it's tracking, well, then it has information about that location. But we're, we're arguing that it lacks access to that information. Um, could it then be that, uh, you know, there's a sort of an error signal that it has access to? Well, if it had an error signal saying, well, actually, my attention should be on this ball, but, you know, well, then it has access to that information via that error signal. So I think it's, it's problematic, and I, I think it's... Uh, a challenging issue for people who believe in zombies to uh, discount uh, mental operations which in normal humans can only take place over conscious operands. Mm -hmm. So endogenous attention, for example, attentional tracking of one ball versus you know lots of other moving balls, or tracking an oboe versus a violin, in normal humans who have consciousness, this attentional tracking operator, so to speak, can only operate over conscious operands in us. Um, and so it's, it's important to try to say, okay, well, is consciousness necessary for anything? Well, if I can find some mental operation that can only happen in the presence of consciousness, then it is necessary for the outcomes of that operation. And so I think attentional tracking is one of them. Paying attention, playing internal scenarios out, and then selecting the best option seems to require uh, subjective experience and selection from um, operands that are consciously experienced. So in that sense, the outcomes of, say, an attentional uh, tracking operation require consciousness.